Do you use Epsom salts in your garden? Are you thinking about it? Before you do, I've got some information you need to hear. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So these types of videos always cause a lot of discussion in the comments section. In fact, let me know your opinions of using Epsom salts in the garden. But I'm not just here to make everyone feel great about their garden decisions. You're allowed to do whatever you want to do. But I am here to shine a light on things that have no basis in fact or are downright false. And I hope that's okay because it's going to save you money, time, and heartache. I know when I talked about miracle Grow, I got called a fear mongerer, a pseudoscientist, an idiot, uneducated, a Republican, a Democrat, a communist. It's gardening, people. Comment sections are fun. Anyway, according to the Epsom Salt Council, did you even know there was one of those? Epsom salt, or magnesium sulfate, helps seeds to germinate, makes plants grow bushier, produce more flowers, increase chlorophyll production, and deters pests such as slugs and voles. It also provides vital nutrients, they say, to supplement your regular fertilizer. If you've been on sites like Pinterest or Facebook, there's endless claims with cute pictures on how great Epsom salts are for your garden. Epsom salts are magnesium sulfate. It contains 10% magnesium and 13% sulfur. Magnesium and sulfur are minor ingredients in the grand scheme of gardening. Plants do need them, but they usually occur naturally in the soil in sufficient amounts. But they can be depleted in various conditions, including heavy agricultural use. That doesn't really describe our home gardens, especially organic gardens. Magnesium is needed by plants to generate the chlorophyll that they need for photosynthesis. Usually this isn't a problem. If you have sandy or low pH soil, you have a little more problem with low magnesium. If you have a magnesium deficiency though, you'll see the lower leaves on the plant start to turn yellow. The veins will stay green. And if that happens, you don't need Epsom salts. You can simply add a two, in two inch layer of organic compost to the top of the soil, water it in well, and organic compost has so many other things other than magnesium that's gonna help your soil a lot. The other ingredient in Epsom salts is sulfur. Sulfur deficiencies are pretty rare, but it will show up as yellow new leaves, so leaves at the top are yellow, followed by yellow older leaves. Now if you have a sulfur deficiency, you don't need Epsom salts. You can just add some organic aged manure to the garden, water it in. Again, this includes sulfur, but also so many other nutrients that are gonna help your soil to thrive. The biggest claim though made about Epsom salts is that it helps prevent blossom end rot in peppers and tomatoes. Blossom end rot is caused by a lack of calcium in the plant tissues, not a lack of calcium in the soil, and definitely not a lack of magnesium or sulfur. There's no calcium in Epsom salts, so I'm not really sure how that myth got so popular. I could probably throw out a few ideas, but it doesn't even matter. Not only does Epsom salt not cure or even help blossom end rot, but it can lead to more of it. Calcium ions compete with, guess what? Magnesium for uptake into the plant. So the more magnesium you have in the soil, the less chance calcium will be absorbed. The cure for blossom end rot is simple and most likely almost free. It's regular watering. It's very rare that your soil has a calcium deficiency. The problem is without regular watering, the plant can't pull the calcium up out of the soil. There are claims that Epsom salts can be used as a weed killer. And if that's true, I have a claim to make myself. Epsom salts are the world's smartest product as it knows the difference between the plants you want and the weeds. Most beginner gardeners Humans don't know that. I guess if you mix it too strong, it can scorch the weed leaves, but weeds are pretty strong and it most likely won't kill them. And that kind of brings us to the next one, the claim that it can be used as a foliar spray, as a pesticide, and also a foliar feed for greener leaves. 
There are no studies that I've found that support either of these claims. Now I suppose that maybe it could have come from the fact that you use sulfur to fight certain pests and diseases, but there isn't enough sulfur in Epsom salts to be at all effective. You would have to use a highly concentrated mix. That leads to another issue with Epsom salts as a foliar feed. The claims are that it's natural, so you can't use too much of it. Try telling that to people who do use too much and scorch all of their plants. Or to the poor weeds that it was used on as a herbicide. As I mentioned, Epsom salts can burn the leaves of plants if you aren't very careful. Back to the sulfur. blossom blight, a spray containing lime sulfur can help. It can also help with pests like thrip, scale, and red spider mites. You still want to check the labels though because there are some plants that are sensitive to sulfur and can be killed by it. How about the claim that it gives more fruit and foliage? Nitrogen promotes more foliage and phosphorus and potassium are really what you want enough of for flowers and fruit, not magnesium and sulfur. So. With all of that, is it ever a good idea to use Epsom salts in the garden? Well, I've been using it in containers for tomatoes, but I may change my mind on that. If you have good compost to start with, there really shouldn't be a need to supplement. One way I have found to use Epsom salts is if seedlings turn purple. A spray of one tablespoon Epsom salts dissolved in a gallon of water do give them a quick pick-me-up, just spritz them a little bit. However, I'm wondering if compost tea would do the same thing. I think that is an experiment that I'll have to add to the to-do list. I'll keep you updated on that one. So if all these claims were true, would Epsom salts be safe to use in the garden? It is said that Epsom salt doesn't linger in the soil, so it's safe for plants. Dissolved Epsom salts, however, can become a groundwater pollutant. So that danger can be beyond your own garden and it starts to affect the local ecosystem and groundwater. To be fair, you'd have to be using a lot of it. But you combine that with all the chemicals sprayed in gardens and the synthetic fertilizers used, and the risk goes way up. So for me, Epsom salts in the garden really are not only not necessary, they're a waste of money as 95% of the claims made for using them are actually false and can do more harm to your garden than good. Again, comment below your views on all of this. If you learned something, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.